20 things that I know in my 30s that I wish I knew in my 20s. I feel like when we go through our 20s, we're flow through life. But as I've come into my 30s, I feel like I'm a lot more retrospective and there's a lot more life lessons involved. Also life lessons that you experience in your 20s that you didn't really acknowledge at the time, but you start to look back on them in your 30s. Number one, the best productivity app on your phone is airplane mode. I've talked about our addictions with social media a lot over the past few years, but truly the best way to increase your focus and your productivity is to just put your phone into airplane mode and put it in another room. There is no distractions that way. I always find that once I'm actually focused on a task, I can get lost in it. It's just when I have this little distraction next to me that I can't seem to be as productive. Okay, number two is normalize saying, I don't know anything about that as a successful answer. I think we're in a day and age right now where everyone feels like they need to have an opinion about everything. And the truth is, not all of us have knowledge on every single topic. I feel like a lot of us fear shame and criticism for saying like, I don't know enough about that. But in reality, by being honest, it can give us the opportunity to make space for learning and actually get the help that we need. Number three, you don't have to finish that movie or that book if it sucks. I feel like our time is very val valuable and straight off the bat, if you are not enjoying something, then just stop. I also mastered the art of reading books by chapters that were of interest to me. You don't necessarily have to read the book from front to back. You can go through a book, find chapters that are interesting to you, especially if it's an educational book. Everyone obviously has different ways of learning, but, but you can read books in a way that is beneficial to you. Number four, drink a full glass of water every morning. Our bodies are made up of 60% water and chugging a big glass of water first thing in the morning is like waking up your brain. Number five is following Japan's 80% rule, which is when you eat to when you're only 80% full. I'm a really fast eater, so it's very normal for me to just gulf down my food and then feel like death after. And I feel like some of us can push and push and push till we're so uncomfortably full and it puts us in a food coma the rest of the night. And it just doesn't need to be that way. When I consciously eat to when I'm only 80% full, I can finish a meal and just feel absolutely satisfied. If you haven't tried this before and you have similar habits, then give it a go and see what you think. Number six is normalize midday naps. There is no shame in having a nap in the middle of the day if you feel like you need 20 minutes to energize. I would recommend that you do no longer than 20 minutes. I feel like it's the optimum time to just recharge yourself. You won't get that groggy, lethargic feeling throughout the rest of the day. Number seven is that a person's favorite sound is their name. I know this sounds like a weird one, but the more that you say someone's name when you're conversing with them, the more they're gonna feel their connection to you I feel like people feel a lot more seen and heard when you say their name throughout conversation I don't know what it is about it but it definitely makes a person feel that little bit more special so next time you're in conversation with someone you can give it a try number eight is to be comfortable being alone I value time with myself a lot more now I see me time as something that is a real luxury and I feel like once you have that comfortability with yourself you are set for life Number nine is a three day rule for impulse buys. If you think that there's something that you really wanna buy but you haven't thought about it for the next three days, chances are that you don't need it. I think impulse shopping can be really dangerous. Um, lots of people do it out of emotion. They give you that dopamine hit. But in reality, what we think we need, we usually don't. So give it three days. If you don't think about it, you don't need it. Which leads me on to number 10, buy it nice or buy it twice, which is a motto that I have lived by for the past few years. I used to buy things really, really cheaply, which meant that I would have to be constantly replacing that cheap thing because I just didn't invest the money in buying the nicer version of it. I thought that I was being more frugal when in reality, I was just wasting my money and wasting resources as well. Number 11, it is never too late to start something new. I feel like when we get to our 30s, we feel like we're too old. In reality, in the grand scheme of life, you are very young. I feel like we can be trying new things up until our 70s, like there's no end to when we can do something. So don't tell yourself that you're too old to do something new because it's not true. Number 12, and it's a difficult one, but don't take things personally. In most cases, how someone is treating you is purely a reflection on them. Maybe they're going through difficult times. Maybe they're generally just not a nice person. 
whatever the circumstances just try not to take things personally i cut out a bunch of things that were low vibrational energy that i didn't even realize i was consuming for example i cut out reality shows with triggering storylines stop watching true crime documentaries and watching the news because without me consciously knowing it these were things that were bringing my vibrational energy down they were making me feel really crappy afterwards and it wasn't until i actually acknowledged why i was feeling that way that i was like right I'm gonna cut these things out of my life and I have felt better ever since. So it's important to take note of what things are clearly bringing your vibrational energy down and what can you do about it. The words that nobody wants to hear but no one is coming to save you and as awful as that sounds, it's the truth. Cut out anyone that belittles you and makes you feel like you're not good enough. If there's people in your life who are constantly making digs at you or speaking about you negatively, you know in your heart of hearts that that isn't someone that you need to be associated with. Okay, trusting your gut, this is a huge one. I feel like as you evolve into your 30s, you're much more in tune with what your gut is telling you. And it's so important to listen because 99% of the time your gut is right. I am so in tune with what my gut tells me nowadays, it's crazy. <laughs> and I know in my heart of hearts that situations aren't right or not feeling confident about a situation or a person, if I already have like a feeling about a certain person, I've always been right. And I feel like we all have this feeling, but some of us choose to ignore it. Really important to be in tune with your intuition and to actually listen. If you aren't okay to fail, then you are not gonna be moving forward. I think it was Henry Ford that said, if you always do what you've always done, then you'll always get what you've always got. If you're not ever willing to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and ultimately fail because everyone learns from failure, then you are not gonna be moving. And as awful as failure sounds, no one wants to go through failure, but it's the only way to grow and learn. I have failed things, I have started so many things and failed so many things, but I keep going and I keep learning from those failures and that's the only way that you evolve. Learn to communicate your issues because people aren't mind readers. We need a lipstick break. Effective communication will solve nine out of 10 of your relationship problems. Even if you find it difficult to communicate, it's so important to find a way that you can communicate effectively with your spouse or your friends to resolve any issues. There's nothing worse than internalizing all of these thoughts and feelings and not actually communicating them. This ultimately will just lead to an explosion, probably an argument, and it's not an adult way to do things. So people aren't mind readers, so tell them what you're really thinking. I believe that YouTube is one of the best learning tools out there. I might be biased because I'm a YouTuber. I feel like we're so lucky that we're living in an era where you can learn almost anything on YouTube and capitalize from it. Not only is it entertaining and fun, but it's amazing that you can gain so much knowledge for free in the comfort of your own home. And the last one is that life happens. Shit happens, life isn't fair. It's a horrible reality that a lot of us have to face as adults. As I got into my 30s, I started realizing how unfair the world can be. I don't know, I feel like it's that unfairness that really make or break people. You really have to learn to roll with the punches, become resilient, and once you face hardships, it's important to not fall down and give up, but to get up again and just keep going. So those are my life lessons that I wish I knew in my 20s. If you have any life lessons, please do share them in the comments below. I feel like we can all learn from each other. Maybe if you're in your 40s or 50s uh, and you're watching, you can let me know what you learned in your 30s. Let me know what I have in store for the next decade. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more from me and I will see you next week. Bye guys. <laughs>